Hey there, this is Hank from Henry Paul Photography. And today I wanna to just talk to you a little bit about light. So without further ado, this is Throwing Shade, a photographer's guide to lighting on your wedding day. So the simplest way to summarize photography is the ability to capture light and just as importantly, the lack of light. Available light is a term that photographers use regularly to describe the sources of light presented to them in any given setting. Knowing all of the different strategies to make the most of available light is one of the many skills that a photographer needs to have. But there are still a number of ways that brides and grooms and people getting photographed can practically plan their available light to make sure their wedding photos look exquisite. So prep photos. When it comes to photos indoors, the number one thing to remember is the more light, the better. It's far easier for your photographer to reduce the available light than creating light out of nowhere. So when selecting a location that you wanna get ready at on the wedding day, try picking somewhere with lots of windows and in particular, white walls are very helpful. White walls and white ceilings. I recommend booking a house on Airbnb um, not only will your photographer thank you for the good lighting, but so will your hair and makeup artists as well. Uh, this is a photo of a creative use of a mirror in a bathroom. And you see, I was able to capture both the bride, her sister and her dad's reaction all in the same frame um, because we had the photo. But you wanna be careful not to have too many mirrors um, if possible, because it makes it really hard for a photographer to be discreet. So ceremony light, let's talk about outdoors. My strongest recommendation is that you position the entire ceremony so that the sun is directly behind where you're standing or directly behind where the guests are seated. There is an app that you can use called Sun Surveyor this app uses your exact location to determine where the sun will be on any given date. So you can hold up your camera using AR technology and you can see where the sun will be. Avoid dappled light. Now dappled light is the spotty uneven light that is created when the sun shines through a tree, for example, a, a, a sparsely leafy tree. So this kind of light makes it really hard for photographers to expose their photos for faces uh, if you've got different levels of light hitting different parts of the face. So here is a diagram that shows you kind of what I've been talking about. So with an open air wedding ceremony, you want the sun to be either directly behind you as you stand out the front uh, or you want it directly behind where all the guests are. And this just means that no matter what the sun is doing, um, it's hitting both of you in the same way. If we had the sun on the left-hand side, then you're gonna get the sun shining really brightly on the face of the person standing on the right. And, and you won't have the exact same amount of light hitting the face of the person on the left. Full shade coverage is what we love when we're talking about outdoor wedding ceremonies. This is where you have like lots of trees or you're underneath a canopy of sorts. Um, this means that there's no little bits of light dripping through, but rather it's just an even uh, filtered light. The, the main thing we want to avoid is dappled light. So this is where you, as I said before, this is just where it hits different parts of your skin, different parts of your body uh, at different brightnesses. And it's really hard to make your photos pretty at that point. The other thing to keep in mind is when the sun is right in the top of the sky at, in the middle of the day, then the way that it shines directly down on faces means that you have this kind of black eye look in all of your eye sockets. So you want there to be some angle in the sun, which means getting married in the morning or getting married later in the afternoon, but avoid that middle part of the day. Um, all right. 
So moving on, let's talk about ceremony lighting indoors. So say, for example, you have to get married at midday, but or or, um, or it's really important to you to get married in a church or something like that, then these are the tips that I would suggest for you. So the same rule applies as the prep photos, which is the more light, the better. The goal for anything indoors is to try and light it as much as possible and as evenly as possible. So that means having one side of the room brighter than the other side of the room should be avoided. Strategies for increasing the available light inside include finding an indoor space with lots of natural light, so windows, 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 opening as many curtains as blinds as you can find in the room, hanging extra fairy lights, and those larger festoon lights uh, actually create more light. Um, Replacing the existing light bulbs with brighter bulbs is a really quick fix as well. Uh, And if we're talking about the color of the light bulbs and color of light available, then white light is typically going to be much more flattering than the yellow light from a photography perspective. Pro tip, pro tip, uh, try to avoid getting married right in front of a window or an open door. This might seem counterintuitive considering what I was saying about having sun for an outdoor ceremony, but the goal is to get the room evenly lit. And if the biggest source of light is coming from behind you, then you're going to be left with a whole lot of silhouette looking photos, which is really tough for a photographer. Now, let's talk about the portrait session. This is the point where you and your lover want to just go away and get some pretty photos, usually done outdoors. Um, Your wedding photographer will guide you and ensure that you're being lit in the most creative, flattering, and expressive ways. So this is why we pay photographers big money is because they're experts at this part of the day. The beauty of light is that there's no end to the ways that it can be used to evoke emotion and tell stories. High key and low key lighting are two of my favorite things to explore when I take my portrait photos, but I try to use most of my time using soft natural light uh, and typically backlit. Uh, Many photographers will talk about their artificial light and what's in their arsenal. Uh, So be sure to do your research when you're speaking with photographers to see what you like uh, and what suits your style. Okay, moving on to the reception. Yes, that's right. Now say it with me. The more light, the better. (laughs) If you take one thing away from this whole presentation, the more light, the better. So usually by this point in your wedding day, the sun has gone down and we are dealing with artificial light for the most part. Photographers typically pull out what we call a speed light flash, uh, which bounces off the roof and evenly lights the room. So when picking a reception venue, looking for a flat ceiling, a white ceiling, those things are going to really help us bounce the light uh, and distribute the light evenly over a... um, a a ceiling that's painted blood red or a a slanted or vaulted ceiling. On the dance floor, we're going to break some rules. It's time to turn the lights off. Um, So dance floors are way more fun when they're dark. No one wants to see you cranking out the propeller after you've had a few too many drinks. Although... What I would suggest is having three or four party lights and they can stay on, but turn everything else off. If you've hired a quality band or a DJ, then they should be all over this. But if you want to sort it out for yourself, then these kinds of party lights or stage lights are really, really cheap to buy on eBay. So be sure to check them out. Um, This is the kind of photos that you can take when you actually remove a lot of the light and you just keep a few particular ones on. So that's it from me. Uh, That is my guide to photography on your wedding day. If you want to see more of my work, please head to my website, www.henrypaul.com.au or follow me on Instagram at henrypaulphotography. Uh, Until next time.